Good afternoon. We're on the floor of the Chicago Midwinter Meeting, February 2018, with President Joseph Crowley, President of the American Dental Association. Joe, it's good to be here with you. Stanley, thank I you. I remember you growing from the early leadership stage at the American Dental Association, putting in a tremendous amount of time for the profession, and now you are president of the ADA, and what an honor to be here with you today. Thank you for spending time with us. We are talking to our audience of dental practitioners, but actually for this particular interview, we'd like to talk to the dentists of tomorrow, Sweet. the students in dental school. And my question to you is, you have been a leader in dentistry really from a pretty young age. How do you manage a commitment to growing a practice when now when you're a dental student, you grow you graduate with something like two to three hundred thousand dollars of debt. How do you manage that business commitment with a commitment to the profession? And I know, for example, that you are spending today a tremendous amount of time on the profession. But it didn't start with nothing. You always were committed to the profession and you always put in time as a professional committed to your associations. You know, um, Stanley, Interestingly enough, I get a chance, an opportunity just like you, to go into dental schools all over the country. And the starting point is easy. 100% of our future, they're there, they're wide-eyed, they're enthusiastic, they know that they're coming into a profession with a very bright future. So it's very right. easy to start when I yes. go in and start to talk to them. And, and they look at me and I talk about when I started and, and how you take steps at a time. You just don't get to the end point because you say you want to. So, then it gets curious. We start questioning and answering, and, and then I have, um, I have them come to us and, and meet with my professional organizations, and we, start, we just start spreading out the news, and it becomes just a very natural back and forth between the younger dentists of today and people like myself who are much more seasoned. Right. That, that's terrific. You know, if somebody had to ask me the question, what makes a good leader, and I would say, well, if you can run a good summer camp, you're a good leader, but mm -hmm. you get everyone involved. Yep. And so how do we get the students that are the dentists of tomorrow involved? Mm -hmm. How do we say to them, you know what? You have to, of course, focus on your practice, but at the same time, come and be the summer camp counselor with us mm -hmm. and help advance dentistry. Yeah, a very interesting analogy concept there. And I think the first thing is they have to trust you. At, you know, when I go in, I have to be believable. I can't, they'll see right through it. If, yes. if you're telling them something that they know just doesn't mix, you know, if they, if they tell you, if you tell them to go jump off the bridge at the camp, they're gonna look at you wide. So you have yeah. to earn that trust and then you can start the conversation. They are just like, just like you and I asking each other questions. They are curious, they're enlightening, you know, I've often thought that I might learn more being with them than they could ever learn from me. And I'm sure, you know, you've been in this business a long time. I've, I've met many of your young salespeople. Right. What was your motivation or what story did you tell them? It's the same story I try to tell the young dentist. Well, he has a bit of a provocative question. It deals with the millennials. There are many that get frustrated with the millennials because the millennials have a different view of life to us baby boomers. They're impatient. They learn quickly, and they're not gonna sit around without doing something. They're gonna want something to do. When they finish doing it, they're going home. How do we work with millennials who are going to be, in the next 10 years, a big part of the dental profession? And in my view, it's the most frustrating generation, but will become the great generation of the future because they have capabilities that no, no one up to now has had. But how do we engage with this group of people that think completely differently and who are going to be the ADA leadership 10 to 15 years from now? Stan, you know, it's, it's, I, I'm excited you asked this question because um, I go in these dental schools and interestingly enough, the dental students don't want to be called millennials. They yeah. think that as a dental student, they're more directed, they're, they have more direction than maybe somebody does. But let's think about some of the good things about millennials their work-life balance that they understand, but more importantly, something near and dear to both you and I, is they have a social conscience. 
Absolutely. They understand that there is good out there that yes. we can be doing. Yes. And in today's world, in our profession, we, we are very directed. We're advocates for great oral health. Yes. Firing up that, that style inside them has been one of the best things we can do because they are going to be our future. And they have this conscience that there are people out there that we can help. That's exciting. That is extremely exciting. I think you hit on something that is very, very important. You know, Benjamin Franklin came up with this notion of enlightened self-interest, doing well by doing good. The ADA Foundation is the vehicle for dentists to do well by doing good. Mm -hmm. We have worked very well at Henry Schein with the ADA Foundation through Give so. Kids a Smile. You just had the national event in Ohio, which was very, very good, where you could show the generosity, the open-heartedness of dentists in this country who want to do good. What, what, what would you again say to the younger students? Get involved in social responsibility? Yeah. It's, that's, that's imperative. That's imperative for their future. Right. Our collaboration with our physician friends and all healthcare providers, are, are, we're guiding toward somebody's total oral health as part of their total health. Yes. Understanding that oral health literacy is important. When I was with the Give Kids a Smile and with your team there, walking through the halls, the excitement that they had because they knew they were doing something that had a value way beyond them just doing a filling right. or doing a stainless steel crown or just even hugging these little kids. They get it. It's exciting. I, um, I, like I said, when I'm with them, I think I learn more from them than they could ever learn from me. I might be able to help them decide what do you do when you make a business decision? How do you look at a contract? All those little things. But their future of being a productive part of our society, the millennials right. get it, and I'm excited for them. I'm so glad you say that because yeah. I think it is critical that we engage the millennials because they have got a lot to teach us about social conscience. Very much so. And if we go one step further, it is very clear now, in the last decade or so, there's a lot of literature that's been published showing the direct correlation between good oral care and good health care whether it's in the cardiac world, in the pulmonary world, in the diabetes world, et cetera, et cetera. You know all yeah, of this. Very much so. What can we do to get decision makers, whether it's HR departments, whether it's government officials, how do we get people to understand the real value of dentists? You know, the, it's frustrating, as you well know. Um, there are some people that will listen to your story, and they have the power to do something, but we have yeah. not been able to motivate them yet. Yes. And I mean, your involvement with our foundation and the other foundation works, I mean, you have been able to get people to change the corner. I don't know how you do it. You have a magic way of touching people. That's the magic we have to do. I think with our legislation, they, they get it, but we can't get them to pull it. I tell them sometimes that this is not dentistry's problem alone. I mean, look at what you're doing at the Shine yeah. Company, and I know you've taken this to heart. Your sales force now is involved in much more than just selling a product. You're asking them to become part of their clients' lives. I, I, I know that's a goal that you have, right. and I think it's showing the way we all work together, all parts of, of this profession. It's not yes. just the dentist, it's the entire profession. And again, with the young people, it's just exciting that they're there. You talked about their debt. That's a problem, but we can help them walk through that because the future is so bright for them right. with, with where we are going to be with being a major part of healthcare today and moving forward. I think it's that, wonderful. That's the, the work the ADA is doing in that regard to help the dentists of tomorrow actually become better business people. Because yeah. at the end of the day, the good news is dentistry in this country is run through a free market system. Yep. So you have to be a good business person but so that you can provide quality of care. Yep. But we have to help dentists, and the ADA is doing that, yep. helping uh, dentists understand well, the business of dentistry. And you've been a partner with us, and uh, you very well know I'm very proud of my ADA, and um, yes, I think we be. play a tremendous role in the future. I think we represent a profession that is noble, Yes. It's honorable, Yes. it's targeted in the right place, and I think we can all help the young people take that to a height that maybe we've never known before. Well, that's fantastic, because as you know, dentistry is one of the highest trusted professions. Isn't, it is in, amazing. In, in, in the world, and in particular in, in, in the U.S. today. So let me just end with one area, and that is digitalization of society is having an enormous impact. When you get into an automobile today, there are a lot of computers. It doesn't matter what part of society, there's digitalization in there. Yeah. We realize that dentists more and more are using digital technology in their practice. Yeah. But as with any business, 
if you want to be more efficient and you want to have better outcomes, you need to use computers and digitalization. Yes, very much what so. can we do to have Dennis understand the importance of digitalization of the practice? You're picking on me. I'm an old guy, right? But, but I, was, um, I was very committed to making my practice stay modern um, using digital world. And that's the young people, that's their communication tools, social media, use of equipment, transferring data. That's all part of the new world, which you know very well. Your, your, um, your sales force and the people that come and help me, when I redid my entire practice, Shine was able to help me do that, putting it to a practical, high quality, digital practice. And what's really interesting, the patients notice that. They get it, right. they notice that. They wanna go to a dentist that has the ability to provide them the best care they can in the most meaningful way. The digital world's here. Let me end by saying this. Your last line, the digital era, the digital time is here. It is here for every industry. And I think for the dental profession, this is an exciting time. The world is understanding the importance between oral care, the direct correlation between oral care, good oral care, and good health care. The technology exists to run fantastic practices while at the same time increasing the quality of care. Yep. And the dental profession in the US is a noble and great profession. Yep. Thank you, uh, Dr. Crowley Joe, for what you have done for dentistry. Uh, thank you for what you're gonna do in the remaining period of your presidency. Yep. And we're counting on you to continue to be engaged in dentistry even right. after your presidency. I thank you, I plan on it very much. Great. Sir. Thank and you, Stanley. Thank, thank, you, thank you very you, much. Thank you, thanks.